Hello everyone, I'm Anna Maria, I'm responsible for Exact Pro Business Development and this session I would like to open with a few, uh, with a discussion of a few ideas of what's trendy in software testing. Fragile process, crowdsource testing, Formal, formal verification methods and cognitive technology. Fragile process. The test is dead since Google Automation Conference in 2011. Reid Hoffman said, if you're not embarrassed of the first version of your product, you've launched too late. Edge fragile process are not necessarily result in a better product, but it will certainly make your developer happier. You should test the idea first and then you will come up with the best decision for a product. Um, crowdsource testing. Um, why not to have many of users by the time when your competitors have a well-tested product? Crowdsource testing relies on a large user pool to collect immediate feedback on your software. And to be sustainable, crowdsource testing rely, uh, had to rely on um, well-built code instrumentation. But what's the point of using it if you're not able to process it uh, efficiently, to process the output efficiently? And can we really use it in finance? Can we really allow an algorithm berserk to burn money and face persecution? So we, we need to find something opposite to agile. The next one, formal methods. Um, there are different areas like transport, nuclear power, medicine that have more rigorous controls and quality assurance methods evolve there. Advances in model checking allow proving instead of assuming that something will work. So I saw a post uh, on a TAP forum a few months ago questioning why are we not using mathematics and computer science similar to what NASA uses, designing autopilots, for example? Isn't it embarrassing that we still have uh, outages in financial markets at the same time when spacecrafts are gliding over the outskirts of the solar system? So, of course, we, we can invest heavily in formal methods, but the thing to remember is that Despite all formal methods, uh, the New Horizons probe had an outage that knocked it out of connection with us for three days. Um, to expect that your system will break is the only way to improve the quality of your software. So what's next? What can we learn from uh, other industries? Can we be both faster and safer? Uh, to understand this question more, let's talk about, let's look at the doomsday scenario. Let's talk about people that had the most severe problems with technology. Sarah Connor uh, and Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> the only reason um, uh, the characters were able to make it at an, until the second season was that they were relying on the very same technology that was trying to kill them. They were um, protected by systems that had the, uh, the same level of sophistication as those they were struggling with. This is the mentality that we should adapt. If you use a complex platform, you should build software to test software. Of course, you don't want your risk controls and monitoring tools to be inferior than what hits them. And having a good robot on your side allows you to to survive a non-robot apocalypse. <laughs> so developing instruments and monitoring tools should have the same priority as the trading platform itself. And agile process and cognitive technology are feasible only when your system is designed with the testability in mind. So uh, don't expect formal artifacts from agile process. You should have a parallel stream instead to develop, to develop the necessary test harness. Of course, we can use formal methods, but, but the system will break anyway, and the absence of adequate instrumentation 
this is what will turn a problem into disaster. We see our mission in building software to test our software. And let me present the four essential elements of London Stock Exchange Group's quality assurance solutions. Uh, hello. My name is uh, Sergey Pavlov. I'm QA manager at Exact Pro. And I would like to tell you about a tool which helps us to do the functional testing. Okay. Um, it's an active real-time testing tool called Sailfish. Mainly we use it to test exchanges, MTFs, brokers, and ticker plans. But it can also be used as a simulator of exchanges. So it can help you in testing of post-trade systems or smart order routers. Connection to the system under test is established via message gateways or APIs. In its purest form, Sailfish is a liquidity simulator. It creates transactions flowing into a system and verifies responses from it. Order entry, market data, post trade, all these and other data streams can be checked in one test script. For this purpose, Sailfish supports simultaneous connection of multiple users for both incoming and outgoing streams. Uh, Sailfish automatically checks integrity of incoming messages and their correspondence with the protocols defined for the particular system. It is done by dictionaries. Different dictionaries are developed for different protocols and for different implementations of the common protocols, such as FIX. Sailfish is changeable. Existing dictionaries can be edited and new dictionaries can be added. And uh, Users are configurable as well, and they can be uploaded and downloaded as XML files. Here you can see a screenshot of Sailfish. Um, scripts for Sailfish are developed in a very clear manner, as CSV files. We also call them matrices. Uh, scripts usually reflect the natural flow of transactions. One row in matrix sends message into system, and the next row or rows verifies system's response. Uh, in columns, we specify uh, fields. Uh, send action generates and sends message into a system with fields defined in the row, while wait action compare, compares uh, fields of an incoming message with fields. Uh, defined in the matrix. It means that we can specify nothing in wait action and check only that messages received. But Sailfish allows to verify not only that the incoming stream has all expected messages and they are correct, but also they are sent in the correct order. It's especially important for market data stream. Also it's possible to check that stream doesn't have any impurities, such as unexpected fields and messages or redundant messages. And all these checks can be included in one test script. Uh, different test scripts are independent from each other and can be run in any sequence. Uh, report of test execution reflects the difference between an expected outcome and an actual behavior. If there are no differences in all actions, the test is passed. If at least one action is failed, the whole test script is failed. The report is absolutely transparent. It allows to easily identify which actions are failed and why they are failed. Also, it's possible to save and export reports. And messages flow is fallen into a database and frozen there. It helps to compare in details the behavior in different releases. Oops, it's too late. Um, in addition to above, uh, I need to say that Sailfish allows you 
to bypass obstacles. Let's consider a typical situation. You need to check the behavior of orders on the book when instrument status is changed. Uh, usually, change in status of instrument is, is performed manually via graphic user interface. And such test is only semi-automated. But if the system under test has the documented interface between the GUI and the backend, Sailfish can simulate GUI actions. These actions can be included into a test script to reach full automation. Sailfish can flash bugs out of your system and it can take the form you need. You connect it to a trading system, it becomes a trading system. You subscribe it to a market data, it becomes the market data. You put it near an exchange, it becomes the exchange. Sailfish can simulate transaction flow and it can crash. Sailfish is like water. Hello, I am Vladimir Panarin and I am a senior software developer at Executive Systems. I'd like to tell you about Post-Trade and the tool to test uh, uh, Post-Trade systems. Post-Trade is responsible for clearing the dust and turning the outcome of electronic trading into a rock-solid legal agreements. Post-trade systems are the foundation of the electronic trading architecture. They are complex, distributed, and interconnected. Post-trade systems have complex operational schedules that sometimes take many days to execute. You have to arrange all your test actions properly to get the output. Clear TH tool was specifically designed with such systems in mind. Clear TH looks after post-trade systems to detect if any issues uh, are present in the work, to spot if any extraneous wild plants are choking out uh, the the seedlings being cultivated, or if any pests are left in a field, and if they should be weeded or exterminated. ClarityH has built-in schedule support to reflect the schedule of a post-trade system under test, and it shadows it in order to find any errors in its implementation. ClearTH scripts are based on a very simple CSV format. Uh, one can use Excel or even simple Notepad application to write them. Scripts consist of actions uh, to perform in the system under test. S actions are grouped into global steps to reflect the schedule of a business day or even many business days. Step by step, action by action, ClearTH tests the system, producing a thorough report about the testing process. If anything went in an unexpected way, ClearTH will alert you. If some actions in a script were used in a strange order or if some mandatory parameters are missed, you will receive a hint. ClearTH allows many users to simultaneously test the system, which makes the testing more effective. There are established processes and procedures in any industry. Post-trade systems use industry standard solutions to implement their functions. For example, the Swift standard for message definition, or message queue as transport layer for message exchange. ClearTH supports many industry standard protocols uh, out of the box. So, it natively speaks the same language as most of post-trade systems. Should you need any custom protocol, ClearTH can be extended to support it. 
ClearTH provides capabilities to test various, various scenarios, uh, even the most tricky ones, by simulating different actions and conditions. ClearTH allows detecting an abnormal behavior in the system under test and thus predict future issues uh, in that system. It has many built-in actions and action prototypes to cover the majority of activities utilized in post-trade systems. ClearTH can send messages and verify the responses. Analyze the database uh, the system works with. Check logs and reports the system writes, and so on. So, by covering as many aspects of mm, this system as possible with tests, the tool allows you to grow your post-rate infrastructure. So, ClearTH is like Earth. Hello, everyone. My name is Alexei Sukhov. I'm QA lead at ExitPro Systems. And I would like to tell you about our active testing tool, which is called Mini Robots. I hope you enjoy it. There is not a big secret that there are many tools and approaches for automated functional testing and for load testing as well. But how do we isolate the defects which are located at the confluence of the functional testing and non-functional testing? Is there any solution that can help us to test such scenarios? Like, um, we believe that the active testing tool, mini robots, um, could be the answer to all these questions. It is based on the idea of simulating real traders' behavior using the uh, algo trading systems to fire orders into our platforms. The algo strategies spread across many instruments and uh, adapt to rapidly uh, changing market conditions. Okay. We think that mini robots tool uh, is suitable for testing the systems having lightning response times. It enables us to strike at the most advanced execution venues in market data delivery platforms. Written in Java, the uh, tool allows the test developer to create a, a variety of complex market scenarios depending on what the testing needs are. Mini robots, for example, can simulate the behavior of a market-making or arbitraging trader. When performing a backtest of some trading algorithm, we usually need to create a counter flow which returns the market data replay to its initial recorded state. And that can be achieved by uh, introducing uh, such script. The mini robots tool can also replicate the logic of slicing algorithm being widely spread among the uh, institutional traders. So we can create a script to simulate the uh, large volume order executed by a broker with the help of so-called VWAP, CWAP, or POV algorithms. A mini robots tool can also uh, simulate the behavior of an active trader who is rushing to sell a stock before the calls and bell rings. Using me robots, uh, we can even cross over to the dark side and simulate an abusive market behavior such as layering or painting the tape. 
So you can assess how your own algo will behave at the heat of competition against the other trading systems, sending uh, the burst of messages to the same liquidity. For sure, uh, you can run all, all of these scripts separately, but uh, if you put them all together and press the fire button, you can achieve something totally different. You can simulate a very realistic market environment. Because to, to test the trading system, you need to run them alongside other trading systems. So will your platform melt down? Or will it shine? Just trigger mini robot scripts light up your system under test and see how flying sparks will illuminate the hidden defect, defects. Mini robots are like fire. So my name is um, Luba Konlova. I'm a QA analyst at Executive Systems. And let me speak of one of my favorite pieces of this testing puzzle. It's a passive testing and our tool designed for it, Shusha. What is it, a passive testing tool? From a tester perspective, uh, it's a program that you can launch and relax and breathe deeply and calmly and simply wait for the results. So it's a salvation for a tester and we all love Shusha. From a technical perspective, it's a program that observes the system without interaction. Uh, it takes logs, dumps, other files, and analyzes them. Shusha is light and powerful. It takes signals almost from the air and analyzes them. Shusha makes invisible visible, and all system transactions become transparent. Shusha is polyglot. It speaks many languages and dialects and is constantly learning new ones. So if your system produces very peculiar sound or signal, uh, Shusha can get adjusted to it. New codec is developed and plugged into Shusha. This codec is shared between Shusha and Selfish. Thus, these tools meet and unite their powers in testing. Um, Shusha is designed for crystal clarity. Why it is so indispensable for a testing? Let's um, see an example of use. For example, you have a toxic issue, which is reproducible only under load and with a 10% probability. Uh, Shusha takes gigabytes of traffic, parses it, SQL queries are run, and all data is, is analyzed. So Shusha returns a number of occurrences of an issue latency, maximum and minimum, throughput, and other NFT metrics. All that data naturally is presented in a user-friendly way and can be exported. Another important instance of a Shusha use is client onboarding. Imagine you have a client who are, d does um, onboarding certification tests. All traffic is analyzed by Shusha and it returns a list of tests with passed or failed status. This makes onboarding process re really efficient. So, audit and uh, regulatory requirements, market surveillance, Shusha is here for you to help. Uh, Shusha is fast, is clear and weightless on the system. So, Shusha is like air. Thank you. My name is Alexis Verev. Uh, I'm one of co-founders of uh, Exact Pro Systems. Uh, and first of all, I would like to take questions about test tools, if there are any in the audience. Okay, uh, what we usually answer is that 
We selected CSV because of its simplicity on one hand and strict rules uh, for creating test scenarios on the other hand. So we can, uh, people, those testers that do not have a lot of uh, freedom in terms of creating some programs on this, in this language, which allows us to support these uh, scripts more efficiently. Uh, in terms of your second question about how much it costs, uh, we develop our tools to use in our testing projects. So if clients select us to do testing for them, then we use tools, then these tools are free for clients. Even if uh, the project is over and we are not, no longer with this client, client can use these tools. If clients do not want to use our services, our testing services, we still can provide a uh, Selfish or other tools, but uh, clients will have to pay for support for these tools to us. Usually it takes uh, one on one and a half men uh, to allocate this, this team constantly to support the client needs for the test tools. I have a question about your mini robots. I'd like to ask the latency that the mini robots have, let's say, when we test arbitrage or and maybe suggested configuration for this. One core latency, what is the core clock speed? Um, sorry, can you elaborate that? Yeah. What is the latency mm -hmm. of a mini robot when it tests, let's say, order submission? Uh, we did not measure it uh, at the mo to, to this moment, but from what we can see, it's, it's, it's within it, it's sub millisecond. So between, uh, between sending an order and receiving response, if we have proper hardware for no. minute robots. No, no, I mean, what, uh, what proof would your minute robot have reduced? Let's say, first order to send, then another order to send. What's the difference between two orders? Uh, well, uh, we don't, didn't measure it either, but we have been able to produce uh, several hundreds orders per seconds uh, using mini robots in one of our test, test environments. Thank you. Any more questions? Okay.